And staying in the neighborhood, Pakistan's Prime Minister got a letter last week, a pretty important one, because the sender was US President Joe Biden. We'll tell you what he wrote. But even if you ignore the content, this letter is important. And why is that? Because it signals a change in US policy. Let me show you a timeline. Joe Biden took office in 2021. Imran Khan was Pakistan's Prime Minister back then, but he never got a phone call. No call, no invite, no talks. It was like Imran Khan did not exist for Joe Biden. Then in 2022, Imran Khan was ousted. Shabazz Sharif took charge as Prime Minister. Again, same treatment. No message, no invite, no talks. So this letter is the first contact between Biden and Pakistan's Prime Minister. It's taken more than 1,100 days. The question is, will it lead to something bigger? Let's look at what Biden wrote. The enduring partnership between our nations remains critical to ensuring the security of our people and people around the world. And the United States will continue to stand with Pakistan to tackle the most pressing global and regional challenges of our time. So Biden is offering support to Pakistan and Shehbaz Sharif needs that support. He leads a very weak coalition government in Islamabad. He was elected in a widely rigged election. So legitimacy is important for him. Many in Biden's party wanted the president to withhold it. They said, do not recognize Sharif's government. But Biden has ignored them. He's promising to forge a quote-unquote strong partnership with Pakistan. Is he backing those words with action though? It looks like it. Last month, a team from the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, visited Pakistan. They agreed to release funds to the government. How much? Almost $1.1 billion. And who plays a dominant role at the IMF? The United States of America. In fact, more loans are on the cards. Shabazz Sharif wants another IMF bailout. His finance minister expects a deal by the end of this year. So the U.S.-Pakistan relationship is on the mend. The only question is, why? The U.S. had effectively shut out Pakistan, and for once their policy made sense. Islamabad had consistently played a double game on terrorism. So the U.S. decided, we've had enough. Plus, in 2021, they pulled out of Afghanistan. So Washington did not need a staging ground in South Asia. They had no direct stake there. What changed between then and now? A couple of things. Reports say Pakistan helped Ukraine's war effort against Russia, even shipped weapons to Kiev. That was a big tick in Biden's book. Secondly, Afghanistan is becoming a threat again. Washington genuinely hoped the Taliban had changed. Biden bet on them to control terrorism, to crack down on Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State. Well, news flash, it did not work. The Islamic State is using Afghanistan as their base. They were tagged Russia, Iran, Turkey and Pakistan. That's four nations in three months attacked by the ISIS. Many experts think the U.S. could be next. Is that why Joe Biden is reaching out to Pakistan to use Islamabad to contain the terrorists? His generals seem to like the idea. They say there is, quote unquote, tremendous potential for a partnership. I literally talked to the chief of the army staff from Pakistan this morning in a regular scheduled call. Um, they have tremendous insight into the violent extremist organizations inside of uh, Afghanistan. And I think there is tremendous opportunity to be able to partner with Pakistan on that. What will that partnership look like, though? Will it be strictly military? Or will it be wide-ranging? Biden's letter offers some clues on that. For starters, who writes a letter? A phone call would have suggested more warmth, more personal investment. But a letter suggests the opposite. Biden wrote one for Bangladesh's prime minister too. No call, only letter. Another clue is the content, or rather the lack of it. Biden did not congratulate Shehbaz Sharif on becoming prime minister. It's common diplomatic courtesy. If you speak to a newly elected leader, you congratulate them. But Biden chose not to. So maybe he does have some reservations. For his sake and the world's, let's hope so. Because everyone remembers the last time Pakistan and America partnered on terrorism. No one wants a repeat of that.